This revision video is designed for students studying English literature with the Edexcel exam board, exams from 2017, a lot long to go now. This is paper two, section B, the poetry. We're focusing on the relationships cluster. Let's do First Aid She, First Aid He by Wendy Cope, the most recent poem in this collection. Take a look at the images on this slide. Uh, you should be able to match a quotation from the poem to each of these images. So pause the video, see how many you can do from memory. I'll give you one for free. So looking at the picture of the lovely Salma Hayek on the left, in that dress, she is very attractive. The neckline can't fail to intrigue. So look at the other four images. Which quotations do you think would best go with them? So what's this poem all about? Really, really simple. It's an awkward first date. And although for the people experiencing the first date, you can sense that real nervousness there, it's actually really, really amusing for us as an outsider, for, a, for us as a reader. Um, neither of them actually likes or knows anything about classical music. It's sort of um, a bit of a boast that I think they've both made. Of, oh, yes, classical music. I love it. Yes, let's go and see a concert. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And actually, they're both desperate to impress the other. But neither of them are actually confident enough to be honest and say, actually, I know nothing about classical music. Shall we just go for a pint instead? And so I think that's part of the humour in this that by kind of fibbing about what they really like, they've ultimately kind of doomed the success of this potential relationship. So a little bit of context. Remember, AO3, you do get some marks for this. You needn't say very much because it's not very heavily weighted, but if you can say something about context, you'll be ticking a little box for your examiner. So Wendy Cope, what do we know about her? She is an OBE, and she has been described as practically the patron saint of single women. And therefore, we could identify her as a feminist poet, but she's also most certainly a satirist. Um, she um, wrote a collection of poems called Making Coco for Kingsley Amos. And for those of you who don't know, Kingsley Amos is a uh, another poet uh, who's from kind of the era just before Wendy Cope, kind of the 60s, 70s. Similar kind of era to um, Elizabeth Jennings, who wrote One Flesh. And in this collection, Making Coco for Kingsley Amos, she takes the mickey out of quite a few well-known poets, including T.S. Eliot, who takes himself far too seriously. And she does a kind of um, satire on his very famous epic poem, The Wasteland. So she's got a bit of a wicked sense of humour, Wendy Cope. But I think also, in terms of context, you've got to realise that this poem would be out of place anywhere other than 21st century dating. So if you think about the number of um, apps on um, social media for these days, that make the availability of dating so kind of um, easy. I don't think this poem would fit anywhere else other than right now, when this sense of, you know, you can meet anybody you like if you just happen to swipe right. I think it definitely belongs in this, um, in our context. And in many years to come, maybe if they read this poem in, say, 50 years, that's what they'll say about it. So language devices, not the easiest thing to talk about because everything in this poem is incredibly matter of fact. Um, it's very upfront and very honest, despite the fact that it's actually all fibs, most of it. But there are some things you can identify. So there's constant use of the pronoun all the way through. I said I liked, she said she liked. It's him, it's me, it's I. Um, it's very rarely we, though. It's often singular pronouns, um, which you might be able to comment a little about. If it were we, for example, it might suggest a, a togetherness. But because it's I and me on my own, that suggests the separation. You've got a little rhetorical question in there, in the he part of the poem, right at the uh, right at the beginning of the final stanza. He says, where are we? Now, that could be a little bit loaded, um, loaded in terms of meaning. Does he mean physically, where are we? As in, where are we in the, in the concert? Have we, have we got past this bit? Or are we over there? But is he also meaning kind of emotionally? So where are we? Is this working? Is she is she into me? Am I into her? He's trying to kind of take stock a little bit. And that rhetorical question kind of offers a little bit of a pause there for us. But you've also got euphemism. So this thing that they both do, it wasn't entirely untrue, kind of skirting around the issue of actually it was a complete fib. So you can use the word euphemism to describe that. So when you kind of dress something up um, to kind of disguise the bare nature of it is a euphemism. Some structural devices. This is a ballad. Um, a regular rhythm all the way through which makes it predictable and therefore creates humour. It's almost like those kind of funny little r nursery rhymes almost um, and therefore it has a kind of childlike um, appeal 
because it is very kind of rhythmic and predictable and amusing to kind of say out loud. Um, you've got this repetition or maybe this motif that keeps appearing throughout the poem that they actually um, couple, they kind of twin their language. Um, she'll say something and then he'll say it as well, but in a slightly different way or in a, uh, in a different part of his poem. So there is a suggestion that although they don't seem to be having a very successful first date, they do repeat a lot of the same ideas, which maybe suggests that they do have something in common. And therefore, that's what the poet is trying to kind of suggest using this structure. And you've got something very rare here in poetry. Um, they are two dramatic monologues, but you get a dual perspective. So whereas in poems like My Last Duchess, we only get the male perspective, in this one we get both the perspective from the male and the female. So it's very interesting from that point of view. I, do, I can't remember ever coming across another poem um, that does this. It's almost like a little play in that respect. So it's got an aspect of drama to it, perhaps, if you were to mention um, something to do with form, perhaps. That might be something you could discuss. So the tone of the mood of this poem. Um, having just talked about its dramatic qualities, I think if you were to perform it out loud, because it is very matter of fact and almost quite clipped in its tone, there is a lot of a lot of monosyllables in the in this language. I think it's quite nervous, you know, hoping that this is going to be a success, a little bit on edge, don't want to say too much, don't want to hedge my bets. So it has got that kind of anticipation to it, which of course is very common in new relationships. But I have to say, personally, I do find the tone in this a little bit pathetic that they feel they've got to pretend to impress the other person. Um, I do find it a little bit kind of, not nauseating, I think that's a bit too far, but I do just kind of want to bang their heads together, if I'm honest. But that's my personal response, and it may not be yours. But of course, it is supposed to be a really funny poem, that they're both completely clueless about classical music, neither of them wants to be there, and they're too shy um, to kind of fess up and say, actually, do you know what, this is not my, this is not my cup of tea, um, let's try something else, perhaps. Um, so it is supposed to be a funny poem and uh, it's one of the very rare, it's quite rare in this collection to come across one that's got a little hint of humour. So I'd say let's enjoy that um, while we can. So the message of this poem, um, had a little think about this one. I think the basics of it are the expectations of romance and dating are often completely ridiculous. We're often sold this myth, this Romeo and Juliet myth, that it will be love at first sight. And actually relationships don't work like that. Often, you know, there is a spark initially and there may be, you know, attraction initially, but love and, you know, um, the foundations of a really serious relationship don't just happen overnight. It's something that has to be worked on. And therefore, this idea of if we just go to a romantic classical music concert, it'll all just kind of fall into place is a little bit ridiculous. And of course, the hilarious message, new love is horribly awkward. As a teacher, I see kind of students um, kind of um, skirting around each other, shall we say, where they're not quite sure of themselves or they want to ask each other out. And for them, it's horribly awkward. But for all of their friends, and I have to say, and for the teachers as well, it's hilarious to watch them kind of not sh being not quite sure of each other. You only have to spend a bit of time in the playground and watch, watch when so-and-so has finally gone and asked so-and-so out and all their friends kind of gather around as a bit of an audience to watch the, uh, to watch the entertainment. So for the people involved, new love, is, new love is very awkward and a bit nerve-wracking, but for everyone else, it's really good entertainment. That's why we have these things in, uh, in our... You know, that's why we love love stories. That's why we love romantic comedies, because it's entertaining to find... Um, to kind of... to explore these new relationships. But also, if we're thinking about what this poet can tell us about relationships and how to make a successful relationship, then it's got to be this message that honesty is the best policy. That If you want to have a committed relationship with somebody and you want it to be a success, you've got to be upfront with each other because lies will, you know, they will out and um, they're not a particularly attractive quality. Um, to be honest, may sometimes be brutal, but it is true. And therefore, communication is the key in relationships. Think about the poems we've explored so far. How many of those relationships that failed maybe would have succeeded had the communication been a little bit better? So time to think about which poems we would compare first date with. Um, I think the most obvious one, if we were looking at first meetings, um, Do She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron. Um, it's much more kind of descriptive in its language, but it's a similar kind of event that it's a coming together of two people for the first time and a first impression. 
So whereas Byron is incredibly kind of lyrical in his description and uses lots of figurative language, um, first date is incredibly matter of fact and therefore the changing context there. So the romantics idea of high emotion versus the 21st century, very clinical Tinder way of doing things, shall we say, um, gives you a lot of basis for discussion there. If we were to look at humour and satire, I think you should look at Love's Dog by Hadfield, which we'll be posting a video of very, very shortly. Again, because these are two fairly modern poems, the contextual discussion that could pin those two together will be very useful. And I tried to think carefully about this last one. I really think that First Date is very good to talk about with My Last Duchess by Browning. One, because it uses the monologue form and this idea of one perspective versus another, but also this theme of kind of truth and lies that First Date He and First Date She are kind of full of these little fibs, but actually the truth is fairly obvious. And similarly, in My Last Duchess, the, the Duke kind of skirts around these little issues that as an audience to, the, to, these, to this kind of monologue, you can realise more about what was actually going on in their relationship and what type of person he is. So in terms of the way that the poets have structured these works, I think My Last Duchess is a really interesting one to compare it with. So your revision or your creative task. Um, two debates. So you might need to find yourself a buddy for this one, or if you uh, like to argue against yourself, then by all means go for it. There are two debates that I think you could have with first date he, first date she. Um, the first one, is this couple a young couple or is it an older couple? This is a conversation I had with a colleague because initially I, I assumed this was a young couple, perhaps um, really wanting to impress each other. Perhaps they met at university, maybe one of the kind of Oxbridge universities and really wanted to impress each other. But then my colleague said, no, I think it's actually an older couple. And I was more convinced by that when she pointed out some of the evidence to me. But uh, maybe you could go and find, see if you can find some of that evidence for yourselves, because it'll get you um, looking at the poem in more detail. And then finally, the other debate you could have, will they or won't they? Will they go on a second date? Are they meant to be? Because actually, when you look at it, they've got a lot in common, but they're not honest with each other. So is their relationship ultimately doomed? So make your decision, young couple or an older couple, will they make it, won't they make it? I hope you found this revision video useful. Um, any comments below and best of luck in your exams.